Hello everyone, welcome back to my Code to Care uh, series. I got a lot of questions on, uh, on all my videos actually, but one of my more popular videos is what is RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation? And I got a few really important questions on it, so I thought I would answer one in this video. Uh, the question is, do you have any methodologies to keep the chunks from internal database private for the RAG recall with the LLM if those internal databases that the RAG system is pulling from are confidential? Um, and I essentially got a couple related questions just uh, like that. One asked is, if we have uh, turned the information into embeddings, into numbers, is it private if I just send those numbers to the LLM? Um, and the answer to that is no, by the way, um, uh, real quick. Uh, when the process of embeddings is not like encryption. Uh, encryption, uh, they go through great lengths in these algorithms to make sure you can't reverse the numbers back into the original text, but embeddings are not like that. Those numbers can be reversed into the text. So don't think just because you turn things into numbers that they become uh, private. But this whole area of leveraging LLMs for private information or confidential information is very important, especially in healthcare where we, we want to use LLMs, but we want to use it uh, in relation to medical uh, data. And uh, we want to keep medical data private uh, for legal reasons and for um, you know, just, just good uh, data, privacy, and governance uh, reasons. So let me answer that question. So let me just remind you of what um, RAG is. So let's say I'm going to do the healthcare case because that's my business. So you're in electronic medical record. Uh, you want to build a system that a physician can ask questions, like has this patient been in here before? Uh, what are their allergies? Things like that. Uh, so you have a prompt that you want to send to the LLM and get an answer back for your user. Uh, the prompt will have instructions how you want the LLM to behave. It'll actually have a subset of the record. Uh, and then it'll have the question itself. Okay, so a RAG system is basically augmenting just the question with some of these um, uh, retrieved information like the the patient medical record. Uh, this is sometimes called PHI, protected health information, is in here. Um, and so the question is, can you do this? Can you use an LLM with, with protected health information? The answer is uh, yes, but you have to be careful. So um, there are different approaches uh, to doing this. So let me start out with what you can't do. Let me erase this so I get a little room here. So I'll just call this option zero because I'm going to cross it off. You can't um, just use an LLM service with PHI. So you can't just go into ChatGPT, post a medical record. You can't use like OpenAI's um, uh, API or these model service providers API with medical uh, information. So that, uh, that is not right. For the most part, they do not guarantee that the information will be kept private or not used in training or that, that sort of thing. So you can't do that. So here are the three things that I see out there in the industry. The first is a better agreement with these model providers. I'm just going to call it an enterprise agreement. But the same way you might have an agreement with Microsoft Azure, with AWS, uh, with GCP to host your electronic medical record in the cloud, and they promise as part of that agreement not to um, use your data in other ways, that, that sort of thing. Uh, you can get enterprise agreements with these model service providers that basically say the same thing. And the key things are no data retention, So once the question is asked and answered, the data goes away. Uh, sometimes they'll say, hey, can we keep it for a few days to support you, to debug problems, that sort of thing, so you can decide on whether you're comfortable with that. Uh, but these models do not need to retain any data to work. Even when they seem stateful, like a chat history or something like that, they're really stateless. Every prompt is a new kind of inference to the model. Uh, so no data retention and then no training. You don't want any training off of your uh, data because then the, the, the model weights might start to memorize things like patient names and, and uh, stuff like that. So uh, you can't do that. 
but you can get these enterprise agreements. Uh, and certainly these uh, model providers want to play in healthcare. Uh, and this is the ticket to admission to play in healthcare. The second, which I don't see that much of, but I'll just mention it, is de identification. Um, so you could theoretically de identify the patient information, ask your questions, and then perhaps re identify it on the way back to, uh, to have the answer sound good to the user. Um, I haven't seen a lot of this, uh, and it's tricky. Uh, De-identification is a tricky process. For instance, you have to shift all the dates, um, and that might affect the language. So if you're, something's happening right now, but you shift the dates to a year ago, um, all the sentences that are in the present tense need to be rewritten in a way. So it can get complicated, de-identification of text uh, and discrete data, um, and you might have to re-identify it to have the answers make sense to the user. But there are some services that claim to do this. I just haven't run into many people doing it, and I haven't done it uh, myself. Uh, we haven't done it here. Uh, and the third is a um, on-prem LLM. They're also sometimes called open models. So these are models that you can uh, get from somewhere, Hugging Face or some other model uh, provider. You can actually install these on-prem. Um, and no information goes anywhere. Basically, the system stays on-prem or in your tenant, in your cloud uh, tenant. And, uh, and the only disadvantage here is some of these models aren't as good as the ones provided by model service providers, and you might need a very large amount of hardware or a very big system uh, to make these perform. Um, but, uh, but that might be the way you want to do it. And there are some use cases where smaller models that are fine-tuned can actually do the... Uh, do the job. So I think there'll be a role for on-prem uh, LLMs as well, and that uh, does a great job, of course, protecting the privacy. So these are the two things I see a lot, um, getting a good agreement with a model service provider, uh, and then looking at on big on-prem models and, and buying your own hardware or pr provisioning your own uh, hardware from your cloud provider. Uh, and both of these are good techniques to protect uh, PHI and leverage LLMs for this kind of work. Okay, hope that was interesting, uh, and until next time, bye.